Hey, welcome to Church Experience. Thank you so much for spending part of your weekend with us. Now's a great time to grab your pens and weeklies and head to your seats if you haven't already, because the service starts in 90 seconds. that you are here today to join us for CE Online. There's nothing better than having time with our CE family together, growing in our faith and our journey with God. I am excited to see what is planned for today in today's service. But before we do that, I wanted to tell you how important it is for you to hit that subscribe button right there. It helps you have a little piece of the next step in your journey each week spiritually and fuels you as you take step by step to grow closer to God and in your faith. In fact, when you see friends and family, comment, share, tell them about what God's doing in your life and bring them to a service. Have them sit with you at CE online service or in person service. Let God transform you and the lives around you. Well, I can't wait to see what this service holds. Let's jump in. Sure. 
Father, Lord, we are just so thankful for you, God. We are thankful that no matter the obstacle, the mountain, Lord, you see that mountain moved. And Lord, we have so much hope in that. That no matter the darkness that surrounds us, the darkness that we're feeling, We are so thankful and to know that we are reassured, to know that you are with us, to know that our prayer is a weapon, that our prayer is our first response and never our last resort, God. And I pray that you help us to just be still. Be still and know that you are God and that the battle has already been won. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your grace, Lord. We thank you for your mercy and your love. And we pray this in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen.
Good morning. How is uh, everyone doing this morning? You guys good? Have a good morning. It's uh, it's been an interesting morning. We um yeah, I came through here that before the first service and there was a there was a wasp flying around you. And my son decides he's gonna try and like joust it out here. So he's got the broom, like like the longest broom, and he's like trying to chase this wasp out, which was quite funny. But uh, welcome if you if you're a visitor, my name is Warren and it's a, it's a joy to be here and it's a it's a joy that you are with me and with us. And uh, it's just it's been a good morning. It's it's we're in year year two of this church plant. I know last year I was counting by the weeks, but I'm not doing that anymore. We're going to count by years now. Hey, we're going to count by years. But it's uh, it's really good to see some some familiar faces, some new faces. So you guys are welcome. It's really cool to see you guys. And and um, we're starting this new series. That that's me. All right. So so we can put that up again. So so last week we had our photo booth that um, that that. Um, that Terry and, and them did last week, Brie, and we had the photo booth out after the second service. And I tell you, do you, do you know the movie uh, Anchorman with Ron Burgundy? When they had the fight, he's like, things escalated quickly. You know that part afterwards? And, and it, things escalated quickly. When you guys all went, I found the, the prop box that they had. And so I was putting up uh, all these other things when all you guys went there. So I thought that could be just a, a fun way to introduce myself, you know? So, so welcome to church. You know, I might wear those once during a Sunday, and no, I won't. If I, if I wear anything, it'll be like a pirate patch and a, and a parrot, you know? For my surname, but that's all good. But we're in this uh, Face with the Name series. And this series actually was uh, uh, Joshua, our worship leader. He actually thought of the series. He, we had our, our retreat where all the, the church experience guys got together. And, and he thought about this as a, as a series, uh, putting a, a face to the name. And so if it's, a, if it's a good series and you enjoy it, then you can thank me. If it's a bad series and you didn't enjoy it, well, then just blame Joshua. <laughs> Should we do? No, I'm kidding. But, uh, but Joshua, I love the fact that you thought of this name and it's, it's there. And... and um, Two things I want to start off with. When we're on this journey of, of putting a face to the name, it's, it's uh, you know, putting a, put, putting a face to the name Jesus and going after him in, in prayer and all that. And we're going to unpack it for the next couple of weeks. But, but two things, if we're going to be on this journey, two things you need to know before you get going on any journey. It's where you are, where do you find yourself, and where you're going. Two things. It's simple. But where do you find yourself now? So, so whether it's your, 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 your journey, your, your discipleship journey with Jesus, whatever it is, it's... You need to know, where do you find yourself now? And where are we going? Where are you going? So we're obviously going somewhere as a church, but where do you find yourself and where, where are you going? Uh, you know, sometimes, it's, sometimes you, you might be in situations that you actually don't know what to do. Like I've, I don't have a clue what I'm doing, but I know someone who does and someone who will follow him. There might be times where you don't have all the answers, but, but okay, we, we're going we're gonna to go there. We're going to pursue it, you know? And so... I love what God's doing in the life of this church. I really do. Don't you love it? I love uh, that we could celebrate last year, the Resurrection Sunday and, and everything that Jesus has done. I, I, I'm grateful that we celebrated a year of this church plant. I'm so grateful that we're starting a young adults group. I even try to wear my, my skinny jeans and my preachers and sneakers this morning, but I don't know if I'll sneak in there because I'm over 40. I don't know. Do I, if I dress really young, I don't even know what that means nowadays. Maybe that's why I'm middle-aged because I don't know what it means to dress young anymore. But... Uh, but I'm just so grateful that we started in that. It's, it's really, we want to be, we, we want to entrench ourselves in this community. We want to connect with people. And, and that sometimes that is, like you said, sometimes that's the front door for a lot of people. Before they w- want to go to church or, or see uh, what's this church like? Is this church weird or not? And what do they do? I'll, but I'll go to a life group and let, let's see how that looks, you know. And so I'm so grateful for that. It's, it's really cool just to kind of see what, what God is doing in the life of this church. And so if we're on this journey together of, of seeking, putting a face to the name and seeking him, we need to know where we are and, and where we're going. And sometimes things might just be confusing to you. I'll give you an example this week. Uh, Cole, my youngest, he loves flag football, loves it. And um, so we got sponsored to do it last season. And so he did it. We got some, some football cleats and, and he was happy and he loves it. And and um, we, we, try to, we try to think of a name, you know, like when you do a touchdown and you have to do like a, like a, 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 like a celebration. And so we came up with this, um, his, his celebration, because his name is Cole, we thought of coleslaw. So he chops up coleslaw as a celebration. And so even when he scored a touchdown on, on we're like, coleslaw, and he's busy doing that. He's feeding himself and feeding his other friends. It's just for fun, you know. But, but so his, his football cleats were getting too small for him. And so I went to the shop to find him some new football cleats. And, and I'm thinking, Lord, just, I, we need, I don't want to spend too much money on it. And so we go to Ross and I, and I find a pair. And, and it was like the one pair in the whole shop. They were marked down. And I'm like, this is amazing. And so we buy them. I'm like, they look slightly differently to the ones I got because these have metal studs. But I'm sure they're fine. They fit him. And um, I'm sure you kind of know where this is going. But we get to the game on Friday. And everyone else is wearing football cleats with the plastic, you know. 
bottoms and, and his are metal. I'm thinking, wow, he's different. And then one of the other kids said, Cole, but those are baseball cleats. I had no idea. I had no idea that there's a difference between baseball cleats and football cleats. Wouldn't it be easy in all the different sports we do in America that it's the same shoes? I think it would be quite easy, but now he's busy running around with football cleats and with baseball cleats, but we'll, we'll get him some new ones, but don't worry. But, but sometimes we, we might make mistakes, sometimes we won't, but we still figure it out while we're doing this journey. So while we're on this face with the name, uh, I want to start off in John chapter 1. So John chapter 1, 35 to 42, uh, it says the next day, again, John, John the Baptist, he was standing with his two disciples. And he looked at Jesus and said, and as he walked by, and said to them, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and said to them. So these were disciples of John's, that, and Jesus is walking past. So John says, Behold the Lamb of God. And they immediately leave John and, and start following Jesus. So Jesus turned to them, following, and said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to them, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Um, he, he said to them, come and you will see. So they came and they saw where he was staying and they stayed with him that day for it was the 10th hour. One of the two who had heard John speak and follow Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first, found his own, he first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, we have found the Messiah. Don't you love that? We found him. We found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Uh, Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, the son of John. Uh, you will be called Cephas, which means Peter. I love this journey. We, we were on this Journey last week, uh, I gave the invitation of, of Jesus when he said, come follow me. And if you look, there should still be some in the back of the, in the, the, the seat in front of you, those little bookmarks that I created and uh, you know, put in a face to the name I really wanted to intro to today. And, and so we're on this journey of, of following Jesus. We're on this journey of this invitation that, that Jesus is inviting us to. And it's an amazing invitation. And unfortunately, a lot of people won't accept the invitation. A lot of people don't accept the invitation. A lot of people... Uh, kind of accept the invitation dependent on what Jesus does for me. That's been a reality in my life for a long time. I'll, I'll follow you, Jesus, if you answer my prayers. I'll, I'll follow you if you, if you um, do what I want you to do. I'll follow you if you answer my prayers in the, in the timely manner that I want it to be answered. That's how I was in a lot of my life. But Jesus is saying here, uh, what are you seeking? That's a question. It's a deep question. What are you seeking? We all seek in something. Maybe we seek in money, a, a good reputation, maybe success, maybe, maybe comfort, maybe a good reput. You know, we all seek in something. You know, what are you, what are you seeking? What do you want out of life? It's a simple question, but it's also very deep and loaded because what, what do we want out of life? We all, we all want something. We, we hear at church because we want something. We, in our work, we want something out of it. Whatever we do, we, we always want something out of things. And so what, what do we want? You know, uh, do, we, do we think, okay, if I just have this, then, then I'll be fine. Okay, well, that didn't work. So then if I just have this, then, then it'll be cool. Then, I, then I'm happy. If I, if I just get that, then... But so Jesus is asking us, what are we seeking? Are, are we seeking him? Are we seeking the, the blessings that he gives us? But, you know, he asks the, these two disciples, he says, what are you seeking? And, and they, their response, what, they, they, they answered the question with another question. They said, uh, where are you staying? See, they weren't seeking something. They were seeking someone. They were seeking Jesus. They were seeking the Messiah. And so they, they immediately, as soon as, as, soon as, um, as soon as he got invited, as soon as they said, come, they, they left John the Baptist. They left, you know, last week we talked about the apprentices of Jesus. They, they were apprenticing under John. And as soon as they see Jesus, and as soon as John says, behold, the Lamb of God, they left straight away, and they went to, to follow Jesus instead. That's amazing. They just left everything. I love the fact that even last week when I talked about the, the invitation that he gave to, to the people, and like even Matthew, the tax collector, he literally said, come follow me, and he left everything straight away. He dropped everything, and he left him straight away. This is an invitation that's available to all of us, and they were seeking him. And so <clears throat> last week, I, I, I kind of... Uh, it was like a prelude to this message. And this message, it'll probably take two weeks to do. And so there might be a bit of a cliffhanger at the end. I didn't get to everything I wanted to do today. But, but the purpose is just to really help us seek Jesus. And, and, you know, where do we find ourselves and where are we going? So we want to put a face to the name. And, and if I'm honest, we've all been discipled. Every single one of us, we've been discipled either by something or someone. Every single one of us. Sometimes we know what we've been discipled by, and sometimes we've got no idea. We, we, you know, it's, it's, it's very interesting how we get like, formed, but we don't know who's forming us. Does that make sense? I'll give you an example. Uh, this one's for free. I didn't do it in the first service. But in South Africa, there was um, a, a medical aid, health insurance that we had. And if you did a certain amount of works out in a week, 
uh, you, you managed to keep your status, and your status meant that you could uh, fly much cheaper, you got certain discounts and things like that, you know, and so it was all related to um, uh, what you do in the week, right? And so if you did a 30-minute workout, well, then you got X amount of points. If you did an hour workout, you get X amount of points, you know, that type of thing. I would never do a run for 29 minutes. I would do a run for 30 minutes and one second. Because uh, I was being discipled by that app, right? Because I knew that if I, if I, didn't, if I got 29 minutes, I get zero points. So if I just do an extra minute, then I get the points that I need to, to get the benefits that, that I need. Does that make sense? And so it's the same thing. Like I was being formed, I was being discipled by this, this app to say, okay, you need to run for 30 minutes. Even now when I go for a run, I'm like, it's a bit weird. I, I still almost now need to run for 30 minutes because I'm thinking if I, if I don't, I've kind of cheated myself out of it. I was being formed, being discipled by, that, that wasn't someone, that was by something, the, the health insurance. You know, we may be being discipled by social media. We, we may be following certain people online and we, we've been discipled by them and, and what they do and what they like and what they don't like. And maybe we follow certain celebrities or certain people and, and, and we've been discipled by them. They don't know that they disciple us, so or maybe they do. But, but we, whatever they like or don't like, well, I'll follow them. You know, so we've all been discipled by something or someone and it's been interesting to, to me is, is sometimes we might not even know. Lord, help us to see if there's things in our life that we need to be undiscipled from so that I can focus on being the disciple of Jesus because true joy will only come from following Jesus. And also following Jesus for who he is, not for what he can give us. So, so often in my life, I, would, I was following Jesus for the blessings that he could give me. So I was, I was following him because I, I wanted things from him. Now I've realized that's secondary. I want to follow Jesus for who he is. Not for what he can give me. Jesus wants to bless us. God wants to bless us. He, he's a good father. He, he wants to answer our prayers. He wants to bless us with things. But, but more than that, he wants to show himself to us. He, he wants to reveal himself to us. He, he wants us to, be, to, to seek him and for him, for him alone. And so even now, I'm like saying, Lord, uh, help me to, to follow you regardless of whether you answer my prayers or not. Lord, help me to follow you regardless of whether uh, life is good or not, uh, whether, whether I'm going through a, a struggle or whether things are going well. Help me to, to seek your face and not let those things determine the relationship that I have with you. Because true discipleship are the ones that follow him just for who he is, not for what he can give us. And when those things come, because God is a good father, he wants to bless us, and he blesses us in the most amazing ways. He's, he's, always, um, he's always working things out for our good. Like it says in scripture, all things work together for good for, the, for those that love him. He, he wants to help us. He wants to bless us. And sometimes you, you'll see that in like, sometimes in the hardest times in our life, God's working the most. Has it, has it ever happened in your life where, where you just feel, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I don't know what's happening. And God just reveals himself to you in the most amazing way that you realize, okay, Lord, you, you're still in charge. I'm going to continue to follow you. Has that ever happened in your life? It has for me. And, and, and what I love about the story is that, they were seeking Jesus, but Jesus was also seeking them out. Jesus was out there walking, and, and so he, he's, the, he's seeking us as well. I love the fact that Jesus doesn't just sit back. He's pursuing us as well with these little things, even like what Joshua said during the worship. He, he, he seeks us. He, he gives us these little glimpses of things that he's, he's still in control. He still wants to bless us. He still wants to lead us and guide us, and he, he blesses us. Not, and so, so now that, that for me is like an added benefit. Lord, I know you're going to come through. I don't know how you're going to come through. I don't know when you're going to come through, but I know you're going to come through, but I'm going to seek your face regardless of that. Because can I tell you, there's a, can I tell you what I struggle with um, uh, leading this church? Uh, well, when I say leading the church, shepherding what God's called me to do, right? God's the, Jesus is the leader of this church, but he's called me to, to shepherd and to, to lead in what he wants to do. Part of this is, is I wrestle with the fact of, of, of what to say to people. Uh, I want you to feel encouraged, but I don't want you to feel blissfully unaware that, that everything's going to be well all the time. D does that make sense? And so part of me is that I need to give people the truth that, that God is in control and sometimes it's going to be hard, but I don't want to leave you there because then it's just going to be me and Jen. Jen can't leave the church unless, you know, then no one else will come because no one wants to be hit over the head all the time about everything. But at the same time, I don't want to be on this side and just say, everything's going to be wonderful all the time. It's, you know, you're going to be blessed and everything. Just do this and this. And I don't want that either because that's false. That's a false gospel. I'm trying to find this middle ground between God is a good father. He wants to bless us. But at the same time that when hardships come, like seek his face because it'll help you get through it. Because I know that in my life, 
In those times where I've felt the lowest, that's where God's comes through the most. In those times where, where I had nothing, I, I didn't know what to do, I didn't know where to turn, that's where God showed his face more than, that, more than anything. And I think that's where true discipleship comes. Can, can you imagine if, if he, Jesus said to these guys, like, what are you seeking? Like, come follow me. Imagine if we had footnotes. Okay, well, I'll follow Jesus if, and we give him a whole long list about what we need out of him. No, we just follow him. And we trust in his provision. We trust in his blessing. We trust in his mercy. We trust in his grace. We trust in all these different things. And I can tell you, I still get rattled sometimes by what God does. But it's been so amazing to see the, 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 the depth of relationships that people are having in the life of this church. That for me has been so rewarding for me to see the, the, you know, what's been happening in people's lives that, that even if bad things might happen, it's God is still in control and I, and I trust him. I'm not, I'm not going to allow that stuff that's happening to, to let me not, fo- to, to lose my focus from pursuing him, from seeking his face, to put in a name to the face. That's been so just rewarding to see. In 1740, Jonathan Edwards was here. I don't know if you know Jonathan Edwards. He was a, a great preacher at the time and, uh, and he, he led one of the great revivals of the time and, and a lot of Americans still talk about the great revival back in 1740. And, and one of the things I love about Jonathan Edwards is that he just spoke directly the truth. You know, so that, like my heart is, is for you. My heart is, is deeply for your, your, your discipleship towards Jesus. Not, not towards me, but towards Jesus. And, and sometimes that might be rough sometimes. There might be things in your life that you're struggling with. There might, and I don't want to just say, oh, everything's going to be wonderful all the time. I, we sometimes need to wrestle with things. I say, Lord, I, I don't know why this is happening, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to f- trust you. I'm going to focus on you. I'm going to follow you. And I trust that you're going to come through. And so many times in my life, he, he keeps coming through. And then if he, if he hasn't come through in the, in the way that I want him to, he just gives me a glimpse of himself to say, keep trusting, keep following. And that's where true discipleship happens. So Jonathan Edwards, he was talking at the time about uh, how God blesses us. And he said there's basically two types of blessing that God gives us. One is temporal, which is uh, the things that, we, that we're looking for, like the, the blessings like jobs and health and, and finances and family needs. It's like temporal blessings. It's here on earth. And then there's also spiritual blessings that he's talking about. And he says, how much more, this is at the time in 1740, he says, how much more do we, do we focus our prayers on the temporal things rather than the spiritual things? How, how much more do we focus on those things that's, that's temporary in nature rather than, than spiritual, which is eternal? And this is how he said it. He says, they don't need any preaching to stir them to take thorough care to obtain those outward things, those temporary things that he talks about. And if they begin to suffer for want of those things, how much do they make of their sufferings? <laughs> he's quite hard, eh? He's, he said, how much do we talk about when we, when we lack in these temporary things? How much do we make of it? You know, how much do we go to the Father and say, why am I not get, getting blessed with these things? He says, has God nothing better to bestow upon you when he made you his children than a little money or land that you seem uh, so much to behave yourselves as if you thought this was the chief, your chief good? I'm bold to say that God is now offering the blessing of the Holy Spirit to this town, and I'm bold to say that we may have it for the, for the asking. You know, Jesus even said in Luke 11, he said, um, how much more will my heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those that ask him? You know, th- this, is, this is hard. This is hard hitting. Th- this is something that I think we need to be reminded of is, is I know these, these temporary things will happen, but how much more do we seek his face for those, those permanent things, those spiritual things that we go to? And, and it, might be, it might be hard work to get there. But can I tell you, anything in life, like I said last week, that's, that's rewarding takes hard work. I mean, I think we went, didn't we go to... Cape Coral together, when we did, we, we, when the whole hurricane came, we went down to Cape Coral, uh, John Hinton and the guys who were going to start, you know, uh, CE down in Cape Coral, and when the whole hurricane like devastated the whole area, a whole lot of us went down there for, it was like a Saturday, and we, we went down there and we worked, for a whole day we just worked, some of the guys went to chop down trees, some of us were cooking, some of us, and there was hundreds of people that came, it was hard work, I can tell you, it was, it was hard work, wasn't it, it was, it was rough, it's, you're there, you're sweating, you're out in the heat. But, but can I tell you, we even dragged our boys with. The boys were passed out on the car on the way home. Can I tell you, like none of us would have left there going, oh, that was a waste of time. Right? Like we just, you, you pour yourself out. You, the people that you bless and you might never see them again. You, you know what I mean? I'm not going to go down to Cape Coral and see all the homes that we helped and all the people that we cooked. Like I might not ever see them again. But can I tell you, I felt good after doing that. Didn't you feel good after doing it? Like, I, I, no one would have been like, oh, it was a waste of time. I could have just I don't know, sat at home and played computer games all day. 
No, you, you feel rewarded when you do something for someone else like that, you know? Be a blessing to someone else. And so, so, so Jesus is inviting us to this invitation that he's given us. He says, come to follow me. And he's saying to these disciples, he says, what are you seeking? Are you seeking me or are you seeking something else? If you seek something else, uh, you might get some, some temporary like happiness, but the true joy comes in when we, when we follow Jesus and, and, and when we seek him and him alone. And that's hard. And so this spiritual formation journey, this road of discipleship that we're on, it, we might think it looks like this. And I wish it looked like this sometimes. You know, one of those like moving walkways, you just stroll there, you've got your bags, you know, you, it's, it's very easy to walk along there. You know, you see the people that are walking just normally and you think, oh, shame, look how much faster I'm walking than them. You can, I'm just going to even stop walking and I'm faster than you, you know. That's how we wish the spiritual formation journey that we're on is like, honestly. Maybe you, you can even, you've got all your baggage, so you just leave it there and it just, it just follows you. You don't have to drag it on. And it's amazing, right? That's how I wish the journey is. And sometimes the, the journey of spiritual discipleship is like that sometimes. Sometimes there's just an ease to things. Sometimes there's blessings that come when we pursue them. And so sometimes life can be like this and our journey of discipleship that we're on. But more often than not, it looks like this. This is us in New York. And there's a story behind this. This was at the end of 2020, about December, like late December 2020. And uh, you can see it's a bit a few years old because look how young the boys look. I mean, Cole's, I think, both of them are almost like your height now, my love. And this, is, this was in New York. And uh, a few months before, we'd connected with Church Experience. I felt called to Tampa. And so for years and years, I was trying to make a plan. And I'd connected with Church Experience. And, and uh, they said, okay, cool, let's make a plan. And so I said, they said, what area? I prayed into areas. And I said, West Chase is the area I want to be in. And, and so I said, well, I need to come. I've never been to Tampa before, so I need to come to Tampa. Now, this was height of COVID. So the only flights from Johannesburg to get here, I had to go from Johannesburg to, to the Middle East, like Doha, Qatar, somewhere there, from there to New York, from New York to Orlando, and then hire a car and then drive to Tampa. It was like a 36, 40-hour like, round trip, right? I got here a week before the family, so I could do some meetings and everything. The family gets here. We were here for, we were here for like a two-week vacation, and it was rough, if I'm honest. It was hard because it's one thing going on a vacation to a place. Uh, it's another thing going on a vacation thinking and knowing that this is where you're going to live one day. You know, you, you're driving past the, the, the homes or the, the houses or the, the shops. Oh, this could be my local house, my, my local shop that I'm going to go to, you know. Where if you're, on, if you're on vacation, you don't think like that. And so it was rough. For two weeks, it was, it was hard because now all this magnificent beauty that we find out. I love Tampa. I love America. But it's hard because you, you realize in all the things that need to happen between now and then and the visas and all that. And, and while we're here, I mean, it was stressful to be here. But while we're here, one of us got COVID and uh, we had to change our whole plan, whole plan to go back. It's, um, we, we had to get testing. But now because we were foreigners, we had to go to the Tropicana field with thousands of other people waiting in our car to drive through testing. And so we get the testing and, and uh, on Christmas Day, we, we get, I get the notification that one of us is, is positive with COVID. And our hearts just sank because our Airbnb is expiring, the car hire we expiring, our flight is leaving in like a few, few days, three days, whatever. And it was rough. We're thinking, what do we do? Oh, I don't know. It's, it's, international flying is, is tough, but now imagine the height of COVID, you've got, you know, it's, 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 it's crazy. And so we're like, okay, I don't know what we're going to do. So we, we push out our, we, we, we think in the next morning, we're going to go straight back to, the, to that testing and we're going to get tested again. And maybe, hopefully it was just a bad test or whatever the case is. And hopefully they don't remember us because they're going to be like, why are you back here? And so we wake up super early the next morning, drive down to Tropicana Field, uh, get in the, in the line to get there. And we get to the front and the same ladies there tested. Oh, why are you guys back? We're like, well, funny that we, you know, we got, one of us got COVID. And so, okay, cool. So, so she says, well, what you should do is get your, Big test. I don't even can't remember what it's called. And then your PCR, because that's what you need to fly and get your rapid one. And the rapid one hopefully will tell you if you. And then if that's negative, just keep coming. In, or if it's positive, just keep coming until it's negative, right? And so we have the testing. We go back in the line, and now we're waiting back, and we get the um, we get the test. That now we're all negative. Okay, cool. Now we're all negative, right? But now we still need to get to Orlando to drop off the car hire to. A friend said, listen, you, I've got points on Holiday Inn. You can stay there. And, and so we, we're planning to fly literally the next day to get onto the plane from Orlando to New York. We get to New York and there's just like Marines all over. You know, oh, have you got COVID? Where are you from? You know, like, whoa, 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 just hold on, you know. And so we, we literally, they said, Let, it should take a day to get the, the little notification that you've got it that you need to show at the airport. And so we, 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 we get to, New, to get to Orlando, still haven't got the, the PCR. 
All right? And I'm saying, Jed, hopefully it just comes through in time. We literally fly in a couple of hours. I'm hoping it comes through. What happens if it doesn't? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen if it doesn't, if it doesn't come through. Get on the plane because they're not checking it in Orlando. They're going to check it in New York. Remember, this is the journey. I wish it was a, a moving walkway, our spiritual journey. But it's more like this. There's all these things and things happen and we have to try and figure it out. And so we, we get to New York. We, I think I've literally just got the, as we land into New York, we literally fly out in an, an hour. Um, I get the notification that, that okay, we're all PCR. It's all, it's all negative. Okay, cool. So I'm like, thank you, Jesus. So we then, we, we just hanging around, we took a photo, and next thing on the loudspeaker, it says, well, the Blackbird family, please arrive at your gates, you know, for an important, me-. and we, we panicking now. We're we thinking, did, did, did we get something wrong? Did they find the, te- you know, the negative test? And they say, you can't, so we're like panicking now. We're thinking, what do you do? So we run through TSA, we, 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 we see the gates on our boarding pass, gate one or whatever, and, and, and so we run in there, and the, the boys were funny. The boys like, this is like Home Alone, you know, because it's JFK, and it's all that, and they like, but I mean, we're running like literally the other side of the airport. So we, uh, while I'm running there, I see like, you know, the, the TVs that have all the different uh, gates. And I see there's a different gate for us. But I'm like, oh, that must be old. So I keep running to our gate. And we get to our gate. Empty. I'm like, what do you do now? So I look at, oh, we've, we've, they've changed our gate. And funny, it's not just next door. It's literally the other side of where we were. So we literally got all the way back to the boys. Like, it's like Home Alone again. You know, this is amazing. Because we literally just watched Home Alone. And so we, we get there, and now we're panicking. We're thinking, they're saying, well, you, you, you can't get on the plane, and uh, what are we going to do? Are we going to be stranded? Are we, we thinking, what's the, what, what are we going to do? We get there, and they said, oh, we just wanted to make sure that you've got all your paperwork, and we showed them everything, and they said, yeah, you guys can go on. I tell you, we got onto that plane, I think, first, before anyone else, and we just, like, lay down on the, on the whew, we were so, that is the journey sometimes. Sometimes you, you know, I wish it was the, the, the journey that we're on, this, this discipleship journey. Sometimes I wish it was, there was ease to it. And sometimes there is. Sometimes things can just open up. And we pray God open doors that no man can shut. And God opens opportunities, which is amazing. But often it's like that. It's, it's that rest in order. I don't know where to, what to do. I don't know how to, to plan this. I don't know what, what I need to do. But, but Lord, help me. Lord, I, I don't know what decision to make. So help me with that decision. Lord, I, I might be running in the opposite direction to the opposite gate. But help me to realize I need to go this way. You know? And so there's all these different things that, that often what happens with our spiritual journey. It's, it's, that, it's that messy middle that we're in, that, that wrestling often with it. But so can I tell you, so if you had to say, when that happened, you might say to me, Warren, why am I here? What am I seeking? Why did, I, why did we leave what we left to come to Tampa to, to shepherd the church? Well, it's easy. I, w- I wanted to work less. Seriously, I just wanted to work one day a week. I wanted to have like a, like a less emotionally draining life. <laughs> hey? I wanted to wear skinny jeans and, and preachers and sneakers to, to my work, you know. <laughs> I wanted to be less busy. I wanted to, 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 to earn less and work more. Do you, do, I hope you get in what I'm, on what I'm saying, right? I came here because I'm seeking him. I'm putting a face to the name. I, I'm seeking who he is. I, and I don't want to do it alone. I, I want to do it with people. So I came here because I love God and I love his people. I, I want to make him known. As, as I learn more about him, I want to invite more and more people to be part of that. That's why I came that's why we came. And, and can I tell you, it's, it's a hard journey sometimes. It, there's highs and lows in that journey, in, in, in your life that you find yourself in. Like in all of us, there'll, there'll be moments where things are going well and there'll be moments that it's not. That's just a reality. And I knew if I preached this gospel that everything's going to be fine all the time and, and all you have to do is just rock up at the church and God will bless you. That's false. Because sometimes, sometimes God doesn't bless in the way that we want him to. Sometimes there's a delay. God always answers, yes, no, or maybe. Sometimes he's saying, maybe, or not yet. And we're holding on to something so tightly, and we say, that's why a lot of people leave the church, because they're waiting for so long for God to answer him, and then he doesn't answer in their time, so they leave the church. And I don't want this side all the time, where, where I want to be just, everything's horrible all the time. No, there is blessing and joy that you can find in that. That's what I'm, you know, in the highs and lows of life, and all the times that we have these unanswered questions. And so we need to know where we are and, and where we're going. And that's been such a joy for me to see the, the, the response that people have to this message that we have as a church. It's, it's been amazing to see the, the love that people have for each other. I came here to, to seek him and to make him known. That's it. That's why I came. And how does that look? I've got no idea. But can I tell you, it's sometimes we might have baggage and we leave the baggage. We just, I'm here to follow you. I don't, I don't need anything else. My, as my desires for him increase, 
my desires for everything else like decreases. Now, not to say I don't love other things. I, I love things. Like I love being with my family and enjoying them and love all these things that God blesses us with. But, but seeking him, it gives me the, the greatest joy in my life at the moment. And that's the invitation that he's saying to us is, what are you seeking? Are you, are you seeking other things or are you seeking me? So that's the journey that we're on. For the next couple of weeks, Mickey, the band, you guys can come up. That's the journey that we're on together. And we get to do it together. God's design is for us never to do this journey alone. He, he didn't just invite one disciple. He had a whole lot of disciples. He had 12. Follow together. And so we get, have, we get the opportunity to do this together. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that awesome, friends? That we, like God gave us an invitation that we get to do this journey together. Do you know what the amazing thing about, about this journey is? Is there, is there is nothing that you need to do to earn your way to do that. Does that make sense? Irrespective of where you find yourself, if you, if you say to me right now, I'm, I'm good with my relationship with God, praise God. We, we're good, I'm seeing Him, I'm, I'm following Him closer than I ever have in my life. That is awesome, praise God for that. But then there might be others here that say, I don't know where my relationship with Him is like. I, I know maybe it used to be better than it is right now. I know maybe there were times where I felt Him closer. There might have been times where I doubted Him less. The invitation is still there still there there's this book called the critical journey by janet hagberg and, and robert gulick where they talked about the six stages of of your spiritual journey your journey of faith and i wanted to go through the first couple today but but i ran out of time in the first message and and so i want to i want to land it at the same place and so we're going to explore this together these six stages next week and, and this is something that's my heart is for you. My heart is so deeply for you and for, your, for God to just reveal himself in, 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 to you the most amazing ways that, that as we go on this journey together, just be honest with yourself. I, I can fake it till I make it to anyone else, but I, I can't with God. I have to be honest with him. And so when we're on this journey, just be honest with him and say, Lord, I, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling now. I'm, I'm struggling. I, I don't know where... I don't know what to do. I, I don't know what decision to make. I, I'm wrestling with something in my life. I, I, I don't know where I need to, I don't know what I need to do. And I don't know what doors you're opening. God wants us to sit with him in that tension and, and, and just wrestle in those moments. But say, Lord, I, but I trust you regardless. There's certain things that I, that I, was, um, I was aware of, of, of um, becoming a shepherd. But then there's other things I just, I was... I didn't realize the, the, the spiritual weightiness because I care so deeply for everyone here that my heart, my heart yearns for, for your acceptance of the invitation that Jesus has given us. I know that um, I'm fully aware that fully aware that an early church plant isn't for everyone and I'm so grateful for every person that calls CE West Chase their home I'm so grateful for you because I know that it, it at times can be messy I know at times it can be emotionally heavy I know at times it can be just easy to just leave and slip in somewhere else I, I get it and so I, I appreciate you more than you know but I also know that this is where discipleship happens is when we, when we sit with God and we say, Lord, what do you want from me? Where, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? And, and how do you want me to do it? And so friends, can I ask you to stand as we pray together? This is the invitation that he gives us and it's available to all of us is just to, to be part of being on mission with him. What an amazing invitation. And so this morning as I was sharing really the question that Jesus has for all of us is what are we seeking? Are, are we seeking him? Are we seeking other things? Are we seeking for ourselves? Are we seeking for him? And I don't know. I know that in, in my life when things is when things is tough and when life is hard I see him so clearly. It says in scripture that he came to die on the cross when I was at my lowest, when I was at my worst. And, and I tell you, friends, in those moments, which I've had moments that we, this week, I've just been so overwhelmed by the, 
mission he's called me to and the vision that he has for this church. But I see him so clearly and that invitation is available to all of us. I don't know how that looks to you. I don't know. I don't know if it means that maybe you just need to say to the Holy Spirit to yourself and say, help me to see you more, Jesus. Help me to put a face to the name. Help me to help me to stop seeking other things. And even if I don't know what I'm seeking, Lord, get, reveal to all of us things in our life that we are seeking that we shouldn't. And maybe we find our identity in other things. Maybe we've Maybe we come to you as a last resort when we've tried to exhaust everything else, every other decision that we make and all the, all the bad choices that we've made, we, we come to you at the end, not at the beginning. Lord, I just pray that, that Holy Spirit, you reveal yourself in the most amazing way to us this week, that you will lead us and guide us, that you will sh show your face on us, Jesus, and that, that this week we will just walk with you, that we just walk with you. Jesus, I love you. We love you so much. I'm so grateful for what you're doing in the life of this church. I'm so, I'm humbled by the opportunity that you've given us. I'm just, I feel overwhelmed at times, Jesus, because I just know what you require of me. And I just, I just pray, Lord, that as a church, we will never lose sight that you are building this church, that we'll always seek you first, that we'll always put our, our eyes fixed on you, Jesus. And I just pray for anyone here this, this morning that if they're going through something, they don't know what to do. Lord, you will just show them your way. Lord Jesus, I just pray that you will just shine your face, that they will feel you. And they know that you are God. Help us to follow you. Thank you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Before our usher team comes forward to receive our tithes and offerings and response cards, here are a few important things happening with our CE family. First class is coming on Sunday, April 14th, and you're invited. If you're hungry for God to do more in your life and want to learn how you can get more connected with CE, this is your next step. First class is an opportunity for you to learn more about our history, beliefs, mission, and vision, and how you can benefit from getting more involved. To let us know if you're interested in attending the next class on Sunday, April 14th, write first class on your response card. Join us for an amazing celebration of life transformation at our upcoming baptism and child dedication experience. Don't miss this incredible opportunity to support those taking these next steps. Register now on your response card if you want to be baptized or dedicate a child and watch for the specific time, date, and location announced soon at your campus. As our ushers come forward to collect our response cards and to receive our tithes and offerings, when you give it to E, you're impacting the lives of people in ways that will last into eternity. Because of your generosity, we hosted 11 services at six CE campuses across three states. We saw a record total of 1,100 people in person and throughout church experience. And most importantly, we saw dozens of people make a commitment to Christ. Your generosity is making a major difference in so many lives. Please help us invest in more life change as we move forward throughout giving in person, in the offering buckets, giving at our website, and through the CE app, or set up a recurring giving gift online. Please be praying and giving towards the mission of seeing more people experience a full life in Jesus Christ. Thank you for being on mission with us to help more people experience a full life in Jesus Christ.
today, your time was well invested. You spent time with good friends at Church Experience. You spent time worshiping God. You spent time investing in your faith. And I know that you will be blessed for that. You know, I actually encourage you, if you made a commitment today, to go ahead and scan the code, visit our website, or if you would love to get connected with your CE family, do the same. But go ahead and take those next steps that get you closer to God, and you will be so blessed for it. Well, you know what? I can't wait to see you for our next service next Sunday. Uh, but as for right now, I hope you have a great week.